Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. We're going to begin tonight with a little secret I want to let you in on. You ready? Here it is. There is no one in this entire nation, including myself, who wants Donald Trump to be somehow rendered incapable of running for president again more than the upper echelons of the Republican Party. I mean, every single one of them, any of them who have any sense, uh, is praying that someone else somewhere will make that happen. Now, it's certainly possible that a prosecutor might do that. That's something we've been focused on a lot. One of the many prosecutors currently investigating the ex-president could come forward, could indict Donald Trump, get a conviction, making it impossible for him to run again. Although, I think it is genuinely an open question as to whether he could still win the nomination from behind literal bars. We've been covering these numerous criminal investigations, including, of course, the two Department of Justice inquiries into classified documents and the January 6th insurrection, the Fulton County District Attorney's case looking at election interference in Georgia, and the Manhattan District Attorney's newly reopened investigation into those hush money payments made to an adult film star during the 2016 campaign. The New York Times broke the news yesterday that prosecutors in that case are now presenting evidence to a grand jury. And the facts of that case are already well established because, well, someone already went to prison for that crime. Donald Trump's former lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, was sentenced to three years behind bars after pleading guilty to eight federal criminal charges, including campaign violence violations. And he admitted to making those hush money payments just before the 2016 election at the direction of Donald Trump. Now, last year, the Manhattan DA's investigation also secured a guilty plea from another Trump associate, his chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg. Earlier this month, Weisselberg was sentenced to five months in jail for committing multiple tax crimes, and Weisselberg cooperated with the investigation, testifying against Donald Trump's business. That business, the Trump Org, was convicted of criminal tax fraud in December. Now, the New York Attorney General, Letitia James, has joined the Manhattan DA's criminal inquiry while also running a concurrent civil investigation into Trump's business. In September, she filed suit against the ex-president, the Trump Organization, and three of his adult children, accusing them of committing, quote, staggering fraud. Today, the attorney general's office released the video of Donald Trump's deposition in that case, where the ex-president invoked his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination more than 400 times. If you're wondering how that went, it basically consisted of a lawyer reading off a laundry list of all of Trump's alleged wrongdoing while the ex-president refused to answer. So the 2020 statement of financial condition contained false and misleading valuations and statements. Is that correct? Same answer. You knew at the time it was finalized that the 2020 statement of financial condition contained false and misleading statements. Is that correct? Same answer. In preparing the 2020 statement of financial condition, Alan Weisselberg, Jeff McConney, and others worked at your direction and followed your instructions to inflate asset valuations on the statement of financial condition by employing false or misleading assumptions. Is that correct? Same answer. Well, that looks like a rip roar and good time for everyone, doesn't it? So every high level Republican, again, anyone with any sense is watching all of these swirling investigations, all of these prosecutors, all of these cases open, probably as closely as we are and hoping something will come of it. Praying that one of these prosecutors will put an end to Trump's political future. Now, the irony is they actually had a perfect opportunity to do that themselves, and they squandered it. The Republican leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, could have whipped Republicans to vote to convict Donald Trump in his second impeachment for inciting the insurrection on January 6th. I think they probably could have gotten the votes to bar him from holding future office. McConnell, though, was a coward. He chose not to. Just after the vote that acquitted Trump, McConnell then took to the Senate floor, basically having already gotten Trump off, to say that he hoped, well, someone else would do what he was too chicken to do. President Trump is still liable for everything he did while he was in office as an ordinary citizen, unless the statute of limitations is run, still liable for everything he did while he's in office. Didn't get away with anything yet. Yet. We have a criminal justice system in this country. We have civil litigation. And former presidents are not immune from being accountable by either one. Don't look at me. I just voted to acquit him, true. 
But someone else should hold him accountable, really, honestly. Someone who's not me should really do that. Well, it's been two whole years, and Donald Trump continues to get away with everything. The clock keeps ticking. We still don't know what will happen. He may never be held accountable or anything. He may get indicted, and that could hurt or help his chances in the Republican primary. I actually don't really know which it would do. But we do know for sure that most people with any political sense inside Republican politics, and this is, again, totally separate from moral sense, which, whew, they think it would be a bad idea for the Republican Party to nominate Donald Trump for president. They want someone else to be the nominee. But those very same people are unwilling to do a single thing to make that happen. Instead, they are looking to prosecutors to do their job for them, and some of them, in a much darker turn, are looking to the march of time and actuarial tables. In this fascinating new reporting for The Atlantic, McKay Coppins explains that, faced with the prospect of another election cycle dominated by Trump, uncertain he can actually be beaten in the primaries, many Republicans are quietly rooting for something to happen that will make him go away. As one Republican consultant said, quote, there is a desire for deus ex machina. It's like 2016 all over again, only more fatalistic. And in Coppin's conversations with elected Republicans and party strategists, he heard repeatedly, I'm quoting him here, that the least disruptive path to getting rid of Trump, grim as it sounds, might be to wait for his expiration. Their rationale was straightforward. The former president is 76 years old, overweight, appears to maintain the diet of a college freshman, and believes, contrary to all known science, that exercise is bad for you. Why risk alienating his supporters when nature will take its course sooner or later? That's the best you got, guys? Really? That's the plan? Of course, that is quite morbid, but it's also another example of the problem. Mitch McConnell wants the prosecutors to do it. Republicans continue to hope for someone else or something else to deliver the solution, and the solution never comes. You got to make the case against him. You got to win the argument. Persuade people. Democratic politics 101. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of us that us libs can do about this. It's going to be settled in the Republican primary. I mean, believe me, I wish that those voters were listening to me. Maybe they are. Hi there if you are. But it's very clear that if they keep this up, keep doing the same thing, they should expect similar results.